Hello, I'm Liz Lumley of Finextra, and we're here at EBA Day in Amsterdam. And today I'm speaking to Mark Brecker of Deutsche Bank, and we're going to talk about global clearing. So why don't you take me through some of the trends you're seeing with global clearing? Let's say major trends. There is a major shift in the global clearing domain when it comes to technology or security. But the most important thing is like the continuation efforts that banks did already in the past. Really putting the client at the center, delivering client value. It's really asking the client what they want and delivering really what they need. And it's not really like it has been done certain times in the past where banks thought what client could need and at the end it doesn't fulfill their requirements. And next to that, banks that operate in a global clearing domain on a global scale, they have to have a very agile operating model. On the one hand, it's payments business, it's talk about volume. You have to have the scale that is really improving the banks that's a return on investment, next to the fact that you have to stay flexible to allow clients to come up with their requirements and you have to be able to customize those without compromising on the scalability. And when you talk about these kind of two scenarios, you can only do that if you do have the commitment from the top of the house of the institution for the commitment into the GTB business. You have to be able to invest into new technologies. We see market infrastructures around the globe that are really putting, let's say, their old legacy infrastructure away and are investing in new infrastructures which either are real-time or it goes to the XML format. So banks have to comply with those and banks have to be able to meet clients' requirements in terms of real-time processing. And next to the fact on the investment side, when you look at the security, the point around cyber attacks is raising every day. Banks have really to secure the business because payments business, it's all about trust. Yeah. When you look at the other angle, which is also very important, is that you are in a day-to-day -day basis confronted with change. It's not only about technology, it's not about operations, but the whole mindset of a transaction bank, it has to be ready for the continuous evolution. Being it from a regulator perspective, which sometimes regulations, <laughs> you cannot foresee them, what comes along. And on the other side, client requirements are so, let's say, diverse, you have to be able as an organization to absorb those. So, I mean, that's interesting. You, you mentioned sort of all the buzzwords that people are talking about right now, talking to your customer, uh, trust, uh, you know, innovation. So, um, I want to move on a little bit to, to standards. What, what part do standards play in all this? Let's say when it comes to standardization, I think standardization only goes along with collaboration. I think the industry in the last couple of months did great achievements when you look at the combination of, uh, first of all, the SWIFT KYC registry, where 12 banks put their brains together, together with SWIFT, and we have created a platform where I think up to now around, around about 400 banks already subscribed to, to get rid of the KYC operational burden. Does not mean that you get rid of the responsibility as a bank, but it's really the point that the KYC registry should allow much more efficient KYC handling in the future. And that's the key that banks collaborate together. Same point was the intraday liquidity reporting, where the banking industry put their heads together, raised it to the level of the BAFT, so that also the BAFT can, let's say, inter, um, let's say, can really chat with the regulators about the potential let's say future, what intraday liquidity reporting solutions could mean for the industry. And I think based on that, we have to continue. Because when you look at the developments on the market infrastructure side with ISO, the US is looking into ISO for high value payments, Europe is targeting 2017, the move in a like for like solution. And I think what would be very helpful is that those market infrastructures would talk together to achieve a common standard. And this is really something what brings value to the end client. Because if we could have same global STP requirements, we could have same really format standards that would really bring end-to-end -end value to the client. And even in the recent examples, because when you look at Swift MTs, they are there since the 70s. But it's really the only global standard that is still there where banks can operate on a global level today. The same we have to bring to the next level with the ISO. And to avoid, for example, when you look at Remimbi, there have been a lot of Remimbi offshore centers created in the last couple of months and years, but each of them is using a different kind of code word that clients have to put into their payment messages. And that's really the point that we need to avoid in the future, to make life easier for retail clients and for the corporate world. 
So um, it, since we're talking about sort of payments and, and clearing, I wanted to bring in um, the, this uh, conversation around new entrants to the market. You know, what impact do you think they'll have uh, on, on global clearing? Let's say first, before coming to the impact, I think the statement from ourselves is, I think the whole disruptors or enablers to the banking industry, I think it has been really a wake-up call. It helped us banks, really, that to get payments more prominent into the organization. It's really something where even board members are asking the payment experts what's going on. Would we be dis disrupted, yes or no? And that's definitely a good thing that that, that wake-up call is happening now because the banks do have the network. They do have really the ability to act upon and to become themselves innovative. The thing about the impact is, I think as a bank, you have to rationalize a bit the hype. There has been a lot of hype around, let's say, disruptors. The thing is, banks should really go into the value chain end to end from their payments processes to slice them down and to see what could be disrupted. In my opinion, if banks would open up their backend uh, systems with APIs, where even would allow external parties to enable electronic banking services for retail or corporate clients, I think that's a good thing, because at the end, those companies are much more agile, have much more quicker time to market, that would help the client by keeping the banks inside the game. Yeah, so the impact is definitely there, but I think as a bank, don't need to be, let's say, too much stressed from the hype, really looking into it, assess it, and take the right decisions.